This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast. It contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care. If you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers, there's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. You take it. All quiet, quiet. on the, the Western, Western Front. Front. Directed by Edward Berger. It's an adaptation of the 1929 novel of the same name by Eric Maria Remark. The third time it's been made into a movie. It tells the story of a teenage soldier who joins the German army during World War I, going back and forth between Paul's experience as a soldier and Germany's armistice negotiations with France. It's up for nine Oscars. Best picture, best adapted screenplay, best cinematography, best international film. Got a good feeling it'll do well there. Best original score, best production design, best visual effects, best makeup and hairstyling, best sound. A 92 on Rotten Tomatoes runs two hours and 23 minutes. This is, as I'm going to keep dumping facts at you, it's the first war movie Pete, that has been nominated for Best Picture in three years. This is a great movie. It is a fan, fantastic movie. I want to save this for the end, but it's a middle of the pack betting favorite, which you can be a long shot, which this is. If you're middle of the pack, you're essentially a long shot. I think they're plus, it's plus 3,300 to win. But if this were a down year, I'd be totally cool with this winning. Like this is a best picture quality movie. I it think. definitely is. And it's it's surprising too. Uh number one because it had almost no buzz of release, maybe because it was foreign. But like uh, I don't I really don't remember any sort of hoopla about this movie coming out. And then uh, I saw a bunch of people saying that it was pretty good. And then I watched it and then it got nominated for Best Picture. And when it got the nom, I was like, absolutely, it should it should be in there for 100 percent. And uh, it's maybe Netflix's best shot since Roma at getting a Best Picture nom or getting a Best Picture winner. What I love about All Quiet on the Western Front is it's a war movie that conveys its message very well, which Mm -hmm. war movies can be. To compare it to 1917, they can be great cinematic achievements and not necessarily amazing movies. That was always kind of how I fell on 1917, and I still came away very impressed by it, but I didn't know how great of a movie and how, how great the storytelling it was in it. This is a movie that exists to tell you war can kind of get a shitload of people killed for little to no reason. Yeah. And with splicing in the armistice negotiations, which was not part of the novel. Correct. Uh, great addition, mm-hmm. because when you're cutting back and forth between a stubborn general who's just kind of throwing a tantrum. Fucking and, petty. Just yes. Just petty bullshit. And then kids getting killed for no reason. Yeah. It, I, Linking those two and kind of seeing how they... Uh, how they play off each other or like feed each other and the cause and effect. I thought that was a, a really nice, uh, a really nice touch. And you're right. This is, if not the most anti-war war movie that I've ever seen, it is very close to the top and the way in which they get that point across, I think are like almost always super effective. The fact that they have they tr- they should really do a great job showing you how much of a machine war is and just like kind of how they just churn out soldiers and it, it, there's like really no there's no morality to it at all right. and like the, like even from the the scene of of Paul getting his uniform which is clearly a uniform of a, a guy who had just died and they ripped off the his name and they give it to him and they're all so excited and it's just like you're feeding into the machine it's it's an extremely excruciating, tough watch, but I think that the message really aligns with the book, and it really aligns to like, hey, some movies need to tell the story of how fucking shitty war is. And it performs its payoff very well, mm-hmm. where in the end of the movie, the characters that you come to know start dying, which you know that they're going to die, and they're dying throughout the film, but uh, late in the movie, there are two deaths that I thought were so heavy-handed and so telegraphed and i thought that that was one of the only two things i didn't like about the movie the other being the score i I don't know why this is uh, up for best score i thought it was distracting and noisy and and bad but the uh, this does contain spoilers the death of paul i thought was perfect where it's the final minute 
It does a matter of fact death scene with a lead character, which is a move that I like because especially in something like a war movie, it shows like, oh, no, no, there isn't some big Scarface ending where you see the guy coming and he's climbing up the wall and it's all building up to this. No, he just fucking died because he was at war and a guy got him from behind with a bayonet. Yeah, and it's and it kind of like fulfills the the theme of the movie, which is that like war is cyclical. And even even with the war ending, it still has that cip- cyclical theme because the kid that like Paul was nice to ends mm-hmm. up kind of collecting his tag at the very in like the very last scene. So, it, it was it was like gut-wrenching and heartbreaking, but uh did you miss at all like the stuff of of um like I don't know how how familiar you are with the book but like did in the you book, read the book yeah wow and no. it, in the book like he goes home uh, for a little bit and I like, did know that was and the book, he yeah. has like a really hard time adjusting to life at home and they so they don't take you away from the war at all basically in in this movie and I didn't really miss it that much like I I think that it it got its point across without having to do that but they do have the great scene with Paul and Cat. I love the character of Cat. It's a good thing they weren't golfing against the French, though. It would have gotten <laughs> really confusing. Yes. Do you get that? No. I knew you didn't get no, it. No, I didn't. I was being nice. What's four in French? I don't know. Un, deux, trois. I don't know. Cat. Oh, really? <laughs> so it was, they would have said, Cat would have been like, please. What are we doing here? The scene where Paul's reading to Cat and Cat kind of flips the switch of thinking of like, what's it going to be like once I go back home? And the dynamic between those two of this isn't a lot of war movies of like, there's no good life waiting for me. You better get out there and live. That's a great scene because like it's daylight. They're at camp. There's no battle. There's no guns. It's dead quiet. They're taking a shit. They're smiling. They're smoking cigars. And still it's brutal Mm -hmm. and it's devastating i want to talk about the two deaths that uh kind of rolled made me roll my eyes uh one was cats for sure where they're like hey the war is over okay we just have to sit around for like five more minutes hey for old time's sakes let's go uh piss off that family that chases us around with guns (laughs) all right so one of them's gonna die that was pretty heavy-handed the other one was uh jaden when they it was like the most obvious Chekhov's gun in the history of anything where they go up to a soldier who has been shot and immobilized and they go up to him and say, hey, we brought you food. And not only that, we brought you some cutlery. What yeah. do you think of that? Guess who kills themselves immediately? I actually didn't see that one coming. Really? Yeah, I didn't see that one coming. And I thought that that was... Uh... It, that one didn't bother me beyond like the uh, like oh come on man like oh yeah you're mad at him yeah and like it's just so it's it's it felt like bleak for the sake of being bleak mm-hmm. but it also like this movie is the entire purpose of this movie is to be bleak so uh, no it didn't make me roll my eyes the uh, the cat one did and it it was like a a little telegraphed but. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I still think... I, yeah, I thought that one was kind of stupid. The other amazing scene... So I, I loved the 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 Paul reading to Cat scene. The other one was the German attack after the uh, attempt at the armistice. Mm-hmm. Where they said you had 72 hours. Yeah. And Germany's like, all right, whatever. It's cool. A we're, real we're desperation to, heave. Yeah, and they make a little progress. And you're like, man, these guys have been getting bad news this whole movie. And then the shot of like just seeing the lights, and as you're watching it, you're like, "Did they have tanks back there?" Oh yeah, those are tanks. <laughs> yeah, and so then the the tanks like the, the counterattack is just merciless. The like five six tanks, flamethrowers, that whole thing, and that's also the scene in which Paul's left in the the little ditch with the with French the, guy. It, yeah, that's just. just an, an epic epic scene that was that was very great uh, all the war scenes like honestly uh are are really well done and like from a technical standpoint this movie is, is amazing all the acting very very good too i i so i don't know who the the paul guy was but mm-hmm. like a, a, absolutely like a perfect actor 
for that role and just slowly being worn down. And by the end of the movie, like he looks like he has been through the hardest shit in the world. Oh yeah. I mean, this, this movie is uh, not nominated for best teeth and deservingly so because they really, they take these, these kids from like, all right, you, they, they look like citizens in the beginning yeah. of the movie and it does a very good job of, as you said, like just from how they give them the uniforms yeah. to, like, they are living in shit and, immediately. And like by introducing the armistice uh, storyline in this movie, you get to see the juxtaposition of like how the higher ups in the military are living and going through the war uh, versus like how the people in the trenches are. And like it's it fucking sucks because like the people that are living lavishly in these mansions and like get to have their their warm meals and their hot showers are the ones you know, extending the war and like letting their pride get in the way and being petty and getting more kids killed who have to like shit into buckets. Uh, gamers will like this little Easter egg in the the film. Uh, the general just looks like Dr. Robotnik. <laughs> he does. I don't know if that's an Easter egg. It's probably not. It's probably it, looks like, not. it looks like if uh, Joseph Pantaleone played, uh, played Dr. Robotnik. It's good. It's pretty, pretty fair. And that guy sucks, man. That guy gets so many people killed. Yes. uh, Such is uh, a war movie. Yes, though, I love this movie. Super deserving of a Best Picture nom. Do I think it's going to win? Probably not. But again, in a down year, this would be... This is like the Shape of Water caliber for me, where I'm like, it's a great movie. And if it wins, maybe people will say, hey, but they were better movies. But this is a great movie. I keep bringing up 1917. It's better than 1917, I, I think. It's, and I and I was like a 1917 yeah, no, champion. Were, like I was like, I would l- kind of like to see this win Best Picture just from how great it was from a technical standpoint. This movie has way better story. Obviously, it's from it's it, it it has a little bit more freedom and it has a you know a source material that's revered. Um, but the story is way better. Like the it, from a technical standpoint, it's still unbelievable. Like it it kind of checks almost all boxes across the board. All right, that's all quiet on the Western Front. <laughs> 